Good morning, everyone. Here we are on uh, January 24th, Wednesday. Looking forward to prayer meeting tonight. As we continue our our reading through Genesis. And um, I, I know we get into Joseph today, but the, we, we started off with something that that is important that I've testified to about uh, many times. Um, we find Abraham, and we don't really know what condition he's in or his family's in, but a lot has been going on. Uh, a lot has happened while he was away. Um, his 20 years with Laban, and um, we know he's had many encounters with God. But at this point, God calls him back to renewal. He calls him back to that place in Bethel where, where he first encountered him. And um, Abraham, we, we know it's a spiritual renewal. Because Abraham clears his house. He, he tells his entire family to get rid of any foreign gods that they may have. And... Um, he ends up burying those under a tree, and then they head off to Bethel. And when he's at Bethel, he encounters God again. And it's a renewal thing that goes on. The, the promise is renewed. Um, he, it's verified again that his name has been changed. And um, it's this thing that God does. It's like we go along for so long, and he just needs to remind us who we are and what he's called us into. And I, I've told many of you that he's given, he gives us these, these, um, these moments in our life for us to always look back on and to be encouraged in. With, with Abraham, it's Bethel. That's the first time he had a vision of God. Um, with the Israelites, it would be the the, the rescue out of Egypt, the, the miracles that were there. Um, with Paul, it was always that road to Damascus. Um, so all the way along, all of us should have something, some encounter that we've had where we look back and we are encouraged and we are renewed in. And when we have nothing else to hold on to, when when everything else seems to be so crazy, God often brings those things back to our minds so we can remember who he is, who we are in him, and what he's called us to. These moments are important, and we, we need to hold on to them and allow them to be a refreshing for us. And uh, hopefully that's what we've been going through as, we, we've, as we're coming very, very close to the, the end of this fast. Um, hopefully there's been those moments of renewal, of refreshing, of uh, going beyond that, of being reminded uh, what he's called us into and, and what, our, um, what our calling is. And I, I know in these last few days there's going to be lots of temptations uh, to give in, a lot of temptations to say, well, that's enough. Um, but I encourage you, go right to the end. Uh, don't break it until Sunday morning. Uh, press in, do whatever you have to do, uh, but just complete it. It's um, those who are on the water fast. I I, I feel your pain. Um, these last few days are, are hard, knowing that the the end is is near. Um, the energy level is very low, <laughs> and uh, most of us have families and work to do. So I, I just bring encouragement for you. Uh, for those of you who are on the, uh, the smaller fast, it's, it's not any easier for you. The enemy is there to tempt you. Your flesh is there to pull on you, whether you've given up coffee or, or sugar or uh, yeast or whatever it is that you've set aside. You'll be tempted to pick it up in these next few days. So uh, don't do it. Hold on. Trust God. And uh, I pray for greater breakthroughs in these days to come. So you have a fantastic day. Be used by the Lord. God bless.